tonight we're in the ballroom adjoining the huge convention center here in Atlantic City, where only a few weeks ago Mike Tyson was demolishing Michael Spinks. Well, tonight Britain's Lloyd Hunnigan has his seventh world championship fight. Tonight he makes the first defense of the WBC title that he regained from Jorge Vaca of Mexico earlier this year. Hunnigan trying to find one swinging punch with which to drop his man, and he can't quite do it. He's got him! He's got him over! He had to go! Tonight, Hunnigan faces Jung Kil Chung of South Korea, a man who's never fought outside his own country before, so he's very much an unknown quantity. Well, Hunnigan, we know all about. We know that when he's in the mood and ready to go, he's mean and efficient. When he's not in the mood, well, one night last year he wasn't in the mood, and this is what happened to him against Jorge Vaca. And the better punches are coming for the Mexican now in this eighth round. The going gets tougher and tougher for the champion. And there's a crack of heads there. And the Mexican is cut above the right eye. So another dramatic turn of events here. And this might be the end, the way the referee's waving. Count Bob Logist, 66 to Hunnigan, 67 to Backer. It's Backer. Backer has won the title from Hunnigan. The bitter disappointment of that night last October. The only time that Hunnigan's ever been beaten in the professional ring, forgotten now as he makes his way to the ring here in Atlantic City, world champion once again. And back in this city on the eastern seaboard of America, where he had his greatest night when he became world champion by beating Don Curry, then considered by far the greatest welterweight in the world. And Hunnigan did it that night as a six to one underdog. Hunnigan tonight, sporting a grey quiff at the front of his hair. The Korean opponent, Jung Kil Chung, already in the ring. Chung had troubles this morning making the weight. He was a pound overweight at the first weigh and he had to make 10 stones. Seven, he went away and he came back within two hours. He didn't quite make it on the first of the new attempts. He went away again for a short time, did some more work, and then Chung came back and came in inside, a quarter of a pound inside the 10 stone limit. But only Chung will know what that extra work cost him. I said to Hunnigan at the weigh-in this morning, you've got a strong one here, a tough opponent. You might have to hit him on the chin a few times if you're going to do anything with him. And he said, well, if I can't get him down on the chin, then I'll go for the body. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner with white letters, he weighs 146 and three quarter pounds. His professional record, 25 victories against three defeats and two draws, 17 KOs from Seoul, South Korea. Ladies and gentlemen, the number one ranked WBC contender in the world, Young Hill And fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the solid black trunks and weighing in at an even 147 pounds, his record, 32 victories against only one defeat, 21 by KO, originally from Kensington, Jamaica, now living and fighting out of London, England, introducing the two-time welterweight champion of the world, Lloyd Hunnigan. Gentlemen, receive your instructions prior to entering the ring. Therefore, I expect to perform like professionals. Do you have any questions? Okay, fellas, good luck. Best of luck. Thank you. The Korean fighting for the first time outside his own country. Hunnigan looks confident. He looks mean to me. Twelve rounds. Hunnigan's title at stake against Jung Kil Chung. Chung has won his last 18 fights. 
three defeats, all of them in the very early part of his career. No knockdown. Not counted. Hannigan frowns. Chung has come to fight. I've seen a lot of Korean boxers in the Olympic Games. They're usually well coached and they're always strong. And this man looks the usual example. And Hannigan could have his hands full here tonight. Chung stands 5 feet 11 inches. Hannigan hurt by a low blow. Told about it by the referee, Tony Orlando of New Jersey. Hannigan wearing the most elegant uh, black trunks, spangled. And cut in fancy scallops around the hems. That low punch is just the sort of thing that will uh, rouse the ire in Hannigan. He's a strong man, Chung, and he's punching with some power. Good body punch that time, a left hand. Hannigan needs to get out of that corner. Chung putting in an enormous amount of work in these first three minutes. This is likely to turn into a savage battle. Good punch by Hunnigan, right hand. And Chung took it well although he's still hanging inside. Well, that was some start. That was some first three minutes to a world championship fight. Hunnigan was caught low and didn't like it, obviously. One or two other little misdemeanors occurred there. I think he took an elbow from uh, Chung. There was a lot of action. And there wasn't much in it in the finish. All Hannigan's professional fights in the States have been in this city, strangely enough, Atlantic City in New Jersey. Yeah. Stick him, stick him, stick him. Go down to the old counter punches, don't move back to him. Go down to him and roll. You know, we've been ready to go. Keep your left hand there, you ain't going to roll. But I'll have my piece. Okay. Yeah, we've got it. Now, Lloyd, 24-year-old Chung, a little slowing coming out of his corner. Hunnigan, the champion, waits. 28 years old. A professional now for nearly eight years. 33 fights behind him. Just that one defeat by back. Hunnigan trying to crack the right hand in over quickly and getting the jab to work effectively looks quite small by comparison with this big man from Korea Chung showing signs here of over eagerness and looking a little stereotyped. His work beginning to look just a little predictable. And a crack of heads there, and Chung comes away from it, complaining and blinking. And complaining, I think, that he's been badly hurt on the nose. 
There was a, a loud crack of heads. Hunnigan's punch is shorter, more economical, and at this stage, looking more effective. Already, the Koreans face marks, particularly down the left-hand side. That might have been where they collided. Two good punches from Hunnigan. And Chung now looking distinctly uncomfortable. Round two. Hunnigan has taken command. Mickey Dub, the manager of Hunnigan, yelling to him not to lean back on the ropes. Mixing his punches beautifully, Hunnigan. Hooks and uppercuts, they're all going in. But Chung's strong and he takes them. A lot of Chung's work missing. The speed and the style of Hannigan's work is making Chung look very pedestrian. But he's still strong and he's still dangerous. Orlando comes to Chung and carries him away as the bell sounds and he looked as though he was going to make another attack. Quite a lot of damage, I think, on the face of Chung and most of it caused by that bad crack of heads early on in the round. Get those irons out. He's certainly got a damaged nose. Yeah. 30 pro fights since uh, Boxing Day 1981. 25 wins, 17 of them inside the distance. Two draws and three defeats. Look at that wide sweeping punch. That was where Huntington was far more economical. <laughs> In the course of a successful pro career, Huntington has won every professional title available to him. British, European, Commonwealth, and then the three world titles he won when he fought Curry, WBA, WBC, and IBF. Gave up the WBA, had the IBF taken away from him. Now he's WBC champion. Hannigan's corner complaining that the Korean is hitting low. certainly got the efficient look about him tonight. It's by no means the lackluster performance we saw in the first fight against Vakin. But I think he knew from the start that it was going to be a hard fight and he had to get into top gear immediately. back of my mind always is his thought that uh, Chung may have had a lot of trouble taking that pound off. It may not sound much to you, but when you've worked to get down to 10 stone 7 and you think you're there and you've taken off everything that's superfluous, when you've got to get another pound off, that's when the strength begins to drain from you. Many a man has been beaten, many a man has lost his title through having to make the weight.
lot of this close quarter tangling that uh, Hunnigan's camp would like to see less of. They want him to stand off and box, get rid of the man, start throwing punches. He can't throw too many from inside there. Get no leverage there. Borderline punch from Hunnigan, right hand. That's the second time in a row they've ignored the bell. And the referee is going to both corners to tell him about it. The, uh, the early defeats that uh, Chung suffered all happened in the first two years of his pro career. In fact, in his first 12 fights. So no shortage of action in those opening three rounds. And Chung already proved himself to be exactly what he was thought to be, a durable opponent. <laughs> Hannigan, remember, had that extraordinary fight in Marbella last year. The fastest ever world welterweight title bout when he beat Gene Hatcher of America in just 40 seconds. Hunnigan, of course, made three successful defenses of the title before Vacker beat him against Johnny Bumfus, Morris Blocker, and Hatcher. Again, the faster hands of Hunnigan and the, the more accurate punching of the champion, taking their toll on the face of the Korean, looking very puffy around the eyes. Again, it's the left-hand side of the Korean's face that's uh, taking most of it. No doubt that Hunnigan is the more accomplished boxer. Turn southpaw now. Hunnigan doesn't do that too often. I wonder why he's done that. Turning southpaw in the middle of a championship defense. Sign of confidence. Or trying to trick Chung into taking something he doesn't expect. Hannigan's face, expressions, the real poker face. Mickey Duff there with him. But it won't take any time. If you feel comfortable in South, we'll find. Otherwise, you're just as successful going the other way. As long as you don't get hit, that's the name, name of the game. Name of the game. You never got hit a punch that round. Okay? Just let the finish of that little slap right at the death until then. Not a punch. That was good, all right? Come on, Lloyd, it's an eight-round fight from now, all right? That's all. It 
Now, what's it to be? Orthodox or Southport? Still Southport. In the background, a little army of South Korean supporters waving miniature flags. Hannigan sticking to the Southport approach. complaining about a low punch and the referee wants him up and he's not going to get up Hunnigan told to stand in neutral corner the Korean goes on writhing on the floor the referee has asked for him to get up and now the doctors have been called in round five now either he is badly hurt or this is an extreme case of putting it on but complaining, most certainly, that he was hit low. Now we shall have to see what comes up in this. It could cost Hunnigan two points under the WBC rules. Any intentional foul can cost the aggressor, the offender, two points. But what happens if the other man doesn't get up? So... Another sensation in a Hunnigan fight. We had it in the first fight with Vaca under WBC rules, of course, again then when the contest was stopped because of an accidental butt and Hunnigan had a point taken away from his scores and when they added the scores up, he'd lost. And the Koreans still writhing about on the floor. Now let's have a look at this again. Let's look at this closely. Well, that certainly was low. That was most certainly a low punch. Now, the whole point is whether that's ruled accidental or intentional. Uh, I suspect it will be ruled an accidental low punch. This is an official timeout. Yeah, well, we don't know either. Declared an official timeout, like American pro football. And now there must have been getting on for three minutes elapsed since the Korean went down. Hannigan remains in a neutral corner. None of his corner have been allowed near him. It's all over. The referee is waving it finished. Hannigan now told to go back to his own corner. And we await the official decision. Well, Hunnigan not looking too worried about things at the moment. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention, please. Under the rules of the WBC and the New Jersey State Athletic Control Board, this is what happened. There was a low blow. A fighter cannot win a bout after receiving a low blow. There is only a point deduction which goes against the fighter who threw the low blow. The fighter who is injured receives up to five minutes. He must get up. If he cannot continue, therefore he will lose the bout. The other fighter wins, in this case still champion, Lloyd Hunnigan. So Hunnigan remains the world champion on an unhappy uh, decision and not too happy a night for him. And uh, I, certainly, I certainly didn't know about the five-minute rule. And clearly, if Chung had got up before those five minutes, then the points would have been totted up. So it's declared as a TKO, a technical knockout, in Hunnigan's favour in the fifth round. An entirely unsatisfactory ending. Hunnigan certainly did throw a low blow, but Chung's refusal to get up, or inability to get up, cost him whatever chance he had of winning the fight. I don't think he would have won it anyway, because I think he was well behind on points. But an unhappy ending 
to a brave challenge by Chung, who put a lot into the first three rounds, but looked to me as though he was heading for defeat anyway. But the low left hand slung by Hannigan has turned what might have been a triumphant night into a rather controversial and somewhat unhappy one. Lloyd, another one of those controversial nights. Were you worried there that you might have been disqualified for a bit? No, I wasn't worried. I mean, if I got disqualified, I would have took it in my stride. I mean, all these things happen in the game, just like I with Vaca. I mean, I'm not going to start feeling sorry. I'm glad I won, you know. No matter how it went, um, when it happened to Vaca, he was glad, you know. So why, why, why should I start feeling sorry now? You know, it, it reversed. You must have realized you did hit him with a low punch. Yeah, I hit him with a low punch. I didn't mean it. Because he held my head down, you know. When I was coming up with the, with the um, left uppercut, he held my head down. When, when someone holds you down, when you can throw that, that sort of punch, obviously they're going to go low. Because you can't come up with it. So you, your body going to come up, but your hands are going in motion. So that what happened. Um, he hit me low. Um, I could easily go on the floor and start pretending like him. But I mean, I, I, I don't understand people that want to go on the floor and win fight like that. What did you make of him lying on the floor there for five minutes? I've never seen that before. No, I mean, he wasn't trying to make a meal of it. But, like I say, I, I can't understand fighters who do things like that, you know, who go on the floor. Obviously, if he was hurt, sure, get up, he had five minutes. They give him five minutes rest. You know, you throw some cold water down there. That's what they usually do, put some ice and stuff down there, and that get you going again. <laughs> Now, you saw the other fight, and uh, the man you were going to fight, Marlon Starling, got done in that extraordinary way by Molinari's. Now, what did you make of that? Yes, well, um, from the first round, I was talking to one of your colleague beside me, and I told him that Marlon Starling had gone from the first round. I said, he's shot. Marlon Starling is gone. And I couldn't, I was saying to myself, well, if he beat this guy, I'm going to knock him out. We were today in the lift. Oh, Marlon Arley's people, they all wanted to take pictures with me and everything. I said, no, 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 after the fight. I said, so I done a rug muffin handshake. I said, yeah, knock him out. And they went out there and done it. <laughs> You've gone on record many times as saying you wanted to meet Stein because you wanted to make him pay for the, the bad things he said about you. Now, that's all gone. Oh, so uh, what about Molinari? Do you, do you fancy meeting Molinari? Yeah, I mean, he would be better for me than Chang because, you know, he'd be more, he's more of a boxer. And it's like being brought for a boxer versus a fighter. So he won't be like um, trying, trying to maul into me. He'll be trying to box me. So I can place my punches much better. Uh, you know, even though I want to fight Stalin and with, you know, a lot of money and all that, I'm not worried about that. I mean, there's plenty of other paydays out there for me. And I was glad I was here to see it happen. <laughs> so what's the immediate future? What are you going to do now? I'm, I'm going to go and um, take my kid to Disney World. And um, spend some time there, and then um, come back to London. Year? Yeah, I want to fight again this year. I mean, as soon as possible. But I want my, my little girl just start private school, so I've got to be in London to send her off in the first few days. You know, she won't forgive me if I'm not there. So after that, um, by sep middle of September, I want to go and train again because I want to sort of get in it as much fight as possible. Um, about four by the time um, in '79. Because, you know, I'm saying I want to retire when I'm 29. So I want to get these fights in and get this, get out as soon as possible. Right. Well, thank you, Lloyd. Quite a night, as you said. Yeah, it's, it's a good night. I mean, we almost had two upset, but um, upset, that was good for me. I mean, no prisoners. <laughs> yes, it has been quite a night. Hunnigan, a controversial winner against an opponent who refused to get up for five minutes. And Starling knocked out at the end of the sixth round by a punch that was officially declared in the end to have been on its way when the bell went. It was some night here in Atlantic City. Good night.